Giant by Tyler Childers is going to be played in standard tuning. Uh, and the chord progression is really pretty simple. Uh, you'll need to know, uh, I think, just five chords for this song. And I'll show you the chords real quick. There's a little bit more nuance to it than purely the chords, but the chords will be a G major to a D major to an A minor walking up to a C major. The bridge will be an A minor to a C major, back to A minor, back to C major, A minor uh, to a C major to a D major that then turns into a D7. Okay, so those are the chords. The intro, though, begins with just muted strumming. Um, so with your left hand, just lay your hand lightly across the string so that they're dead. And I'm going a down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. up. And that's basically the strumming pattern for the whole song. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. Um, whenever the first chord rings in, it will be on a G chord. I've got my second finger on the sixth string three fret, my pinky finger pulled back to the one string three fret, and you will strike the sixth string with your pick, and then immediately go into the series of hammer-ons. So G down, and then hammer-on, uh, from the open 5 string to the 5 string 2 fret with your 2nd finger and then repeat that hammer on on the 4 string open 4 string to 4 string 2 fret with your 2nd finger and then come back and do the same hammer on again on the 5 string 2 fret so you've got uh, hammer 5 string 2 fret, hammer 4 string 2 fret, hammer 5 string 2 fret and into the G chord and then we're going to come up to a D chord. In this D chord, I've got my first finger on the three string two fret, ring finger on the two string three fret, second finger on the one string two fret. Uh, first finger, I may have just misspoke, uh, misspoken. First finger on the three string two fret, ring finger on the two string three fret, second finger on the one string two fret. Um, and I'm beginning the strumming on the open four string. And we've got this two beat feel, like a down, down, up, down, uh, down, down, up, down, down, up, but uh, the first down is on the four string, and then the second round of down begins the five string, so like four, five, four, five, that feel. After the D chord, we've got a little lick moving into the A minor, which is that will. That is moving out of the D chord with your first finger to the five string two fret. You strike that and then immediately hammer on with your second finger to the five string three fret. And then you hit the open four string behind it, like. And then the next note is moving into the A minor. And a lot of times I feel like you want to, whenever you move into the A minor, begin the strum on the open five string but the next note is going to be the four string two fret where your second finger goes down into the A minor position with your ring finger following suit on the three string two fret and your first finger on the two string one fret. And then you'll do another hammer with your second finger on the four string two fret before hitting the open five string. And then you're going to walk into the C chord by hammering with your second finger to the five string two fret and moving with your ring finger then to the five string three fret bringing your second finger back into C position on the four string two fret open three string your first finger having remained in position from the A minor the whole time on the first string I'm sorry on the second string first fret and an open five string so and then it goes back into, oh, I haven't finished the riff right here. So in the C chord, once you get to the C chord, it does that little lick, which is the exact same lick that we did in the G chord. It's just moving it down a set of strings so that it's conditional upon, uh, conditional upon the C chord. You will hammer on with your second finger to the four string two fret, move and hammer on on the three string two fret, 
and then do the same thing back to the fourth string, two fret, remaining uh, with your ring and first fingers inside of C chord position, and then back into your G chord uh, for that round uh, to start all over again. Um, so from that point forward it enters the verse phase, which is the exact same round of chords, but um, it doesn't do those hammer-ons in the G chord like it uh, did in the intro every time that we get back around to the G chord. So whenever the verse begins, the G chord becomes more like... So it will lead up into the D chord by hammering with your first finger into... Uh, first finger goes on the 5 string 2 fret and then you hammer with your second finger on the 5 string 3 fret and then hit the open 4 string so that it will feel like this out of the G chord. Now I'm back in the D chord. And then you fall into the A minor the same way with that hammer on. Walk up into the C chord. And again the G chord. Hammer to the uh, from the 5 string 2 fret to the 5 string 3 fret with your 1st and 2nd finger. And then move into the D chord. Do the same hammer 5 string 2 fret 5 string 3 fret. Hit the open 4 string A minor. Uh, hammer the 4 string 2 fret. Hammer the 5 string 2 fret. Move into the C chord. And then do that same thing again. Uh, whenever the verse comes around, every now and then, Every now and then, so when, whenever the verse comes around, the movement into the D is the same, but sometimes out of the D, the movement into the A minor becomes you hit just the lone C chord, like D, A, D, D, C, A minor. Uh, and you can hit, like in the A minor, you might want to play the open 5 and open 6 for that 2-beat feel at times, but still anchoring back to the random hammer-ons with your 2nd finger to the 4-string 2-fret. Hammer 5-string 2-fret, build back up into the C chord, back down to the G. Finally, whenever we get to the bridge of this song, the bridge will just be the A minor walking up to the C chord, and then whenever you get to the C chord, sometimes it walks back down, like C, B, A minor. C, B, A minor. So that walk down would be out of the C chord, strike the, uh, the five string three fret where your ring finger is, but then move with your second finger to the five string two fret, walking it down uh, to the B note, and then open up the five string, moving your second and ring fingers into A minor position, your first finger again having remained in the same place between the C and the A minor chords all the time on the 5 string 2 fret. And then whenever it builds up to the D chord, it's just a kind of standard 2 beat feel on the like open 4 string, open 5, open 4, open 5, and then it, it falls into a D7 chord which is your second finger on the three string two fret, your first finger on the two string one fret, and your ring finger on the one string two fret from an open four string down. So after that D7 uh, chord, it goes back into the G chord and you've got a mandolin that is just uh, by its lonesome playing the chord progression, which is still G, D, A minor to the C while Tyler Childers is back to his muted strumming of down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So Tyler Childers is doing that for a round of the chorus while the, uh, while the mandolin is playing by itself, and then he comes back in. Playing that chord progression from the verse and chorus again. So, those are the chords and the movements to Jersey Giant by Tyler Childers. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to approach the song.